Hello. Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And as you can see, I'm, well, you can't see I'm sitting in a chair, but you can see that I'm not sitting in my big black reclinable chair. Uh, unless, of course, I had some kind of special effects going on. But <laughs> what would be the point of that? So there you go. I'm in a chair. I'm not standing up. I could be standing up. There'd be no way of knowing, would there, I suppose? But I don't think it'd be very comfortable to stand up for an hour or however long it takes to get this thing done. So... As you can see, if you're watching the video, I've got a bit more of a setup going on. I've got two microphones. I've got them connected to the recording studio, digital recording studio, and I'm using my iPhone to record, like to make the video. <sighs> it's a lot of work, just getting it all connected and testing it, and I just. Uh, I wasn't too pleased with the sound quality uh, on yesterday's session, so I'm trying to improve the sound. So hopefully this will do it, I'm hoping. So let's have a little drink of Coca-Cola. Of course that wouldn't be something that you drink before going to sleep, because it's not really a... It's not really Horlicks, not Horlicksy, is it really, Coke? So only watch this video or listen to this MP3 when you can safely close your eyes. And that's my website. I oh, know it isn't. Oh, what does that say? Jason Newland Hypnosis. Yeah, self publicity. So the whole point really is for these particular uh, sessions, let me bore you to sleep, is that I just talk at you. I just talk for however long the session lasts. Sometimes it's 42 minutes, sometimes it's... 47 minutes I've gone 52 minutes once I think I'm done yeah 57 58 I've even gone over an hour so an hour and two minutes I don't usually go much over the hour I could I suppose but it's other things to do <laughs> you know I don't, you know, I could I suppose just sit here and talk for five hours, but first of all, the video camera, I wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to film for that long. Um, I'm not sure if I'd be able to record for that long either. So I'd probably be end up just talking for five hours and then realise it cut off at two and a half hours or something, so... And I've, I've made lots of recordings over the years where I really felt that it was a good recording. Maybe it wasn't on video. Maybe it was uh, on a you know, uh, digital recorder or a microphone. Or uh, maybe the microphone was plugged into, it was a USB one, so it's uh, plugged into uh, you know Audacity. So it's recording through Audacity or some other recording software and then at the end of it I realised that I forgot to press record and I've been talking for an hour or 40 minutes or 30 minutes 20 minutes but even so it's still quite a long time and it's always those little bits of gold those bits of oh ooh you know really just If only I could capture that magic every time and and then then I've lost it, I've lost the recording. And maybe 
it does record but then the laptop freezes and I lose the recording or other times I've recorded made videos and then I end up losing the video because the phone doesn't work properly it doesn't transfer it properly <sighs> same thing happened with the video camera so yeah so I've probably over the years probably a good 30 or 40 maybe 50 sessions I've lost um, due to malfunction of some kind as well as probably another 100 plus maybe 200 even that I've lost due to um, laptops breaking and I just haven't lost or the podcast closing down without telling me that happened quite a while ago podcast it was well, I haven't started yet by the way this is this is me being interesting and I had this was it pod podcast.com pod it was something anyway and I used it and it was back in so I remember it was before I started doing my university course and I started that in uh, think it was the beginning of October 2007 so I already had this podcast for about a year or two and I'd reached a hundred thousand listeners or downloads plays whatever and then one day I went on there to check the stats because I was getting at some point I was getting like thousands and thousands every day just plays it was really growing and they deleted nearly like half of my recordings to make space because it was a free service and they didn't offer any kind of uh, paid service and then eventually they just deleted everything they closed down couldn't believe it I've got over it now I mean, it's a long time ago but it's sort of good nine years but so I'm not sure if I already said only listen or watch this when you can safely close your eyes because it is a let me bore you to sleep and it is um, it's it, you know it's aimed at that although I'm not don't necessarily mention sleep although sometimes I will mention sleep it just depends on how you know what what words come out of my mouth really but the aim is just to I'll give the, the the description of a good description I remember years and years ago you know uh, if you've been to a um, you've been out the night before and then you're in school or you're at college or you're at work and you really just whether whether you've been drinking the night before or whether you just haven't had enough sleep whatever the the reason or maybe you just overdid things i mean i know that if i went out now and it's about just gone nine o'clock in the evening if i was to go out and dance for an hour in the garden or in the supermarket or wherever and then come came home i would be tired because uh, it's something I'm not used to doing. But regardless of what it is you were doing, maybe it was, uh, my memory is once I was at a company do, and I worked for this insurance company, and we all went out a big, uh, like a summer, not brolly, a summer ball, is it a ball? We had, sort of had, um, dressed up in tuxedos and such things like bow ties and I never I've, I've done two two of those been to two balls two balls both both of both of my balls um, have been at insurance companies both my balls have been in two different insurance companies and yeah I think the other one was also kind of just after the summer 
probably about September time. But anyway, I remember being there, going back to work the next day, and I had sunglasses on indoors in the office. Um, the general rules didn't really apply that day, as long as you didn't um, swear at a customer or poo on the desk. You know, I mean, pretty much everything else was okay. It's just it's a case of just getting through the day because everyone else was also in the same kind of boat. Um, yeah, well, we used to, I used to work on a boat. And it's that feeling of trying to keep your eyes open, but you're really just struggling against it. And the more you try, the harder it is. The more you try to stay awake, the harder it becomes, the harder it feels. And the more you just want to close your eyes and just drift away and just keep trying to come back, to trying to stay awake, but it's just becoming harder and harder. And it can be a bit like that sometimes if you're in a relationship and the other person wants to talk. They really want to talk about something that's just not quite as interesting to you as maybe it is to them. And it might be late at night, maybe. And you're trying to stay awake and you know, you're know using all the techniques to try to uh, restrain those yawns one that I found was by pushing your tongue against the top of your mouth like that so so they don't they don't know that you're trying to stop a yawn um, the other thing is is it putting your finger in some water some warm water no, that's a different thing. Yeah, it's not that. But it's, there's different ways. You know, some people are really good at holding in your words. I don't even try. Unfortunate during job interviews. But so the point is, if you in that experience, that situation, and we've all had them. It could be any number of things, times when you just you just want to just lay down you just don't want to listen and it's this person like me I'm talking about nothing and I'm trying to grab your attention and you really don't want to listen because it's just pointless there is no point at all to listening to this there's, you know, there's no it ain't, it's not going to change the world, you know. It's not going to. You're not going to wake up in the morning and suddenly find out that you've got an extra hundred thousand pound in your bank account by listening to me. You know, it'd be worth listening to me then. Because boring though, it's the whole point is the boredom that it's a boring uh, monologue of nothing. And that mindset of trying to. St- stay awake but then you know that you can't and you just it's it's not that the person talking to you is upsetting you or saying anything bad it's just you know we've got that inbuilt thing in our in society where perhaps um, we're perhaps polite which is I think is quite a nice thing where you don't just say sorry you're boring me goodbye it's it's not something, and it's only I've only been said people said that to me a few times over the years, so it hasn't happened very often, four or five times a week, not very often. So I can be that for you. I can be that tedious, boring, pointless chitter chatter that just sends you into uh, just it's like you, your brain just switches off and the benefit is that while I'm yabbering on and on and on and on and on that and on 
but you can notice that your focus has changed and you're just focusing on me and my voice and wondering it's that kind of um, paradox of what is this what so you're making these videos and audios mp3s and you're being boring and it's kind of a weird thing because my way of being boring is by being talking about things that interest me and embracing the boringness of St. Boredom. I own, I am the president of Bordonia. I love this such a place. So, and also I should say that those of you that have only ever listened to me in the past, because uh, I've made quite a few of these Let Me Bore You to Sleep sessions, and most of them are just MP3s available on Spotify or iTunes or SoundCloud or my website, jasonnewland.com. But you've got you might be looking at me for the first time you might be seeing a video of me for the first time on youtube or on my website or you might you might be look watching it on uh, facebook or twitter or somewhere like that and i understand that it may take a while to get over the novelty of my face it you know it's a it's a novelty it's a novelty factor but then if you're going to close your eyes anyway, you don't need to look at the video. But then if you decide to, maybe you need to just have something to laugh at, you can just turn, open your eyes, look at me, have a little giggle and then go close your eyes again. And it's, it's all good. Everyone wins except me, really. But so the whole point is the need just to talk and it's not really to you it is more at you it is a monologue it is no two-way thing it's just me talking to me really uh, but I am talking to you but it does if you were sitting there you'd be um, there'd be a communication backwards even if it was just a, a yawn or a look of You know, of, it could be any look. You can fill in the gap there. It could be a look of astonishment. It could be a look of who farted. It could you know? It could be any kind of look on your mind, on your on your mind, in your mind, on your face, on your face, whatever. And so that's really what this is. And I don't really want to do an introduction to every single video and mp3 that I do because I just spent the last 20 minutes introducing this and um, you know before starting so I suppose I should start I should uh, stop being so interesting and get down to being boring now so just to let you know not everything I say is true not everything I say is false. Not everything I say is made up. I just say stuff and that's it. Nothing to be read into. Uh, it's just stuff. I might talk about experiences of my life. And the only time I really uh, remember things is when I start talking about things. And then a memory will jump up and say hey Jay what about me tell them about me I'm a memory worth mentioning and and I do and uh, then the memory says could, could have like told the story a bit more energy a bit more 
enthusiasm. Oh, I saw something on the news earlier, and it was uh, they were interviewing teachers because they're trying to get young people, children, students to get into STEM subjects like science, science subjects, and some one of the teachers or tutors was being interviewed by the uh, the news interviewer reader whoever and they said what what do you look for in a student uh, for you know to come into uh, doing a science course and the teacher said we look for someone that's enthusiastic And that was it. And that infu we look for someone that's enthusiastic. Now, I didn't expect him to be spinning on his head um, and, you know, sort of jumping around and dancing on top of a piano or anything. But it was kind of the way he said enthusiastic. Uh, it just seems to be the opposite to the word. Um, I can't really do examples, or I suppose as I'm really excited about that. Yeah, that's brilliant news. Oh, I'm really, really pleased for you. Hope it all works out. You know, maybe it's the lack of energy into the voice, maybe. But, you know, I can't, you know, this this is how I kind of talk anyway. Sometimes I do, I get a little bit excited sometimes. Not excited enough or enthusiastic enough to take up science, but never really been into science. I like using, I like using science. I like to, you know, um, things that have been created through science. Uh, for example, everything, really. I suppose everything we use, televisions, the internet, every, it's all been created by sort of science or scientific engineers or it all kind of comes from a scientific um, little scientific volcano you know so it's I like using but I'm not really I'm really interested in creating scientific things in the same way I like to I like to eat breakfast cereals but I don't want to work on a farm you know, it's, I'd rather just open the packet up and pour it into the bowl and, you know, just pour some milk in. I don't want to, don't want to have to like sow crops and milk cows just to have a bowl of breakfast cereal, a bowl of cornflakes, it's, or Weetabix, because sometimes I like to eat Weetabix. There was a time years ago when I, because I used to have such a small amount of money, and not that I'm uh, not exactly rich now, but I used to really live on the bread line as well as working. So sometimes I'd just have breakfast cereal because I didn't have a, a f money for food, but I'd have like breakfast cereal. So I'd I'd work and I'd come home and I'd have. Uh, like five or six Weetabix with milk and way, way, way too much sugar for anybody of any size, of any age, of any fitness. It should not have that much sugar. I was, it was too much sugar. But I loved it. And uh, I used to do that. Didn't always make the best decisions. 
when it came to food when I was younger. Yeah, sometimes I'd go and buy an ice I'd buy ice cream. Viennetta ice cream used to be one of my favourites. And you can still buy it. I got a, I got a um, a log a log, but it's a block of Viennetta in my freezer. I might have some actually tonight. Um not instead of my dinner like I used to, but as well as you know, maybe as a dessert afterwards. And you know some people say, Oh, live live life on the edge, do something do something different, be creative, have your dessert before you eat. I just the two things kind of stop me from doing that is one is once I've had my dessert, I'm not kind of hungry, you know, anymore for but like, normal food. Kind of you know, it's a bit and the other time is the other thing is, I think a dessert, especially when I was younger, it used to be a reward for eating that other stuff that I had to eat. It was a reward. If you eat this on this plate, these vegetables and this stuff, if you eat that, consume that. Keep your mind on the goal. Keep your mind on the jelly and ice cream that you're going to have afterwards but you have to consume that first so it's uh, it is it's like okay you, you gotta run around a field for five hours but if you do that you'll be able to sit down in a chair in the warm you know you get a reward for your suffering so that's that's why that's perhaps that's why once I left school I I kind of gravitated towards having dessert instead of eating. Not all the time, but sometimes. But I don't do that anymore. I sometimes do that. I don't generally do that, but sometimes. You know, it's not like a constantly always. I wish there was a way of doing these microphones so they were... I mean, if I got them any closer, they'd be earmuffs. You know, they're really quite close. There's... Is that much difference? I mean, that's what, it's got to be about 15 inches. So it's like not a lot of, you know. I hope the sound comes out good though. It should do. I haven't banged into any of the microphones. I've, um, although there is, there are some sounds of car going on outside, outside, but that's all right. I don't know how much of that will be picked up because I was over the other side of the room and I was clicking my fingers trying to. Uh, get rid of a bogey that had dried on there <laughs> no I wasn't I would clicked my fingers and to see whether or not it was measuring the sound on the digital recorder and it wasn't much because I wasn't anywhere near the microphones so now I'm here I'm hoping that it is registering and it's picking it up and it'll all be fine but hopefully it's not taking any notice of other sounds that may be occurring elsewhere within the uh, vicinity, vicinity, definity, area, yeah, yeah, that's it, so, I wasn't sure what I'll talk about today, but I thought maybe I'll talk about my experiences with glasses, so, when I was young, Girl, everything's when I was younger, and I started this recording when I was younger. But when I was young, I I didn't wear glasses. Didn't wear glasses for probably the first fifteen years of my life. Didn't need them. Didn't wear them. 
I didn't wear them because I didn't need them. And no one else in my family, apart from my grandmother, wore glasses. I don't think my granddad ever wore glasses. Unless he wore them when he read the paper. I have a little memory that he did because my granddad on a Sunday I used to see it on a Sunday he might have done it during the week as well but on a Sunday he used to buy um, the Sunday newspaper I think in fact he used to go to the news agents every day and get a paper and it was very fit very um, he was ex-army and he kept his fitness up all the way through, all through his life. And he used to walk. I'm not saying walking to the news agents to buy a paper is a sign of great fitness, but he did it even in sort of elderly age, you know, elder age. He did it, and uh, it was yeah, it's very fit. And you have to be on a Sunday, isn't it? Because the newspapers are quite big. The amount of supplements. By that I don't mean um, nutritional supplements like vitamin C or vitamin A or vitamin B or vitamin D, vitamin E. Is there a vitamin F? Is there a vitamin G? Vitamin H? Vitamin I? You've got iron. That's not a vitamin I, is it? It's not a vitamin, is it? It's a mineral. Isn't it a mineral? J, vitamin J. Juice. Well, that's, but juice then would have possibly vitamin C in it, but then it depends what kind of juice, I suppose. Juice, K, vitamin K. Um... Vitamin L. What is the K? I forget what it is. There's, there's like a seaweed that starts kelp. That's it, kelp. Because I used to take kelp years ago. When I was about 16, I was into going to the gym. I've been going to the, doing weights and going to the gym for a couple of years at that point. And I, no matter what I did, I always stayed it's really slim and really just light you know I wasn't big at all I was muscly but I wasn't big and I just wanted to be big and you know like bodybuilder kind of and I just couldn't no matter how much I ate or how much I trained it didn't make any difference it just it was like there was just it wouldn't I I just wouldn't grow I couldn't get any bigger and I'm clearly I, I grew out of that and I did get bigger but at that time I couldn't and I used to be I got this because I used to read bodybuilder magazines uh, there's one called Flex that I used to read I used to read that at school and there was, wasn't there another one called I think it might have just been called bodybuilding uh, but Flex was the the big the big magazine because that was the one that used to cover the Mr. Olympias and the Miss Olympias and the Mr. and Mrs. Universes and at the time and uh, there was because I was reading it in 1986 maybe the year before as well but that was yeah maybe 1985 and I'd read it during maths because I didn't do any work in a maths class. I just used to read my magazine and I'd be left alone, really. And I remember there used to be a... The bodybuilders at the time, there was one called Mike Platts. And that's P-L-A-T-Z, I think. And he was blonde and he was absolutely huge. A big bodybuilder. And his thighs were, he had the biggest thighs, muscles in his thighs out of any border, bodybuilder pretty much that had ever been around at that point. And 
remember him and he used to smile and he looked like a chipmunk because he looked like he'd had or a little, a little squirrel like he'd got his cheeks were full of nuts you know that he'd like squirreled away and he was hiding them but smiling as if to say what what nuts i've not seen any nuts have you i don't know what you're talking about i wish i had i'd love to have some nuts love nuts but i don't have any i wish i wish i did uh, you need to keep looking mate have you tried him over there you seen inside his shorts i think they might be inside his pants and at that point arnold was no longer a bodybuilding you know he wasn't a bodybuilder anymore he was a move you know movie star he'd uh done the terminator and all that stuff i think like so so i did I was reading that. It was another person, and it was just it's a Mr. Olympia, probably 1985. And Albert Beckles, he came something like third, or maybe even second. And he was in his 60s, or he might have been 59. He might have been 58. 50. Maybe fifty-five. He was. I'm sure he was just under sixty. But I suppose some people would class fifty-five as being under sixty. But I mean, technically, twelve is under sixty. But he wasn't twelve. I imagine each of his arms were about twelve stone. But he was big, and he. It was a bit of a star because of his age. He was the old eldest oldest or eldest I suppose you could use both those words couldn't you you could use oldest and eldest the eldest the oldest but then if you use the word elder like an elder statesman you don't use older statesman elder seems to be a bit more like reverential or respectful maybe but he he's yeah, he smiled. All the bodybuilders, when they're on the podium and on the stage, um, flexing their muscles and stuff, and it was only pictures. I mean, there was no internet back then, um, so it was a magazine, like the old old fashioned. We, it used to be on paper. Um, for those that haven't seen a magazine, maybe that have only ever sort of been on the internet, um, there's. It was like an internet page, but you physically turned it with your finger. Um, and it, it was kind of like a book, but bigger in size, but not as many pages, depending, of course, on how big the book was. Um, I would say the average amount of pages in Flex, and this is a guess, um, probably would be probably about 70 pages maybe 75 maybe 60 I think they were quite I mean it wasn't like um, it wasn't war and peace it wasn't big massive you know, and the pages weren't thick. They were glossy. Glossy, yeah, pretty glossy because of the, the pictures were really good pictures. And it, was, it wasn't it was just pictures of bodybuilders posing. It was also, there was interviews with bodybuilders. There was also um, articles on training. So how to get your biceps, you know, uh, bodybuild your biceps and, how to bodybuild your your thighs and how you know to build the muscles bigger and uh, there was articles on how to how to train your shoulders to to make your shoulders uh, more muscular and there was articles on yeah, a lot of our articles on your back how to how to make your back uh, more muscular 
uh, like the whole of the back, not just not just the top of the back, but also the middle of the back and the lower back. And there's that bit that goes, um, well, it's to the back really, basically. There's, there's a certain pose that some bodybuilder, well, they probably still do it, I don't know, but I've not watched a bodybuilding competition since uh, 19... Yeah, probably about 1985, or whenever Pumping Iron came out. That's the early 80s, I think, and that was with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Lou Ferrigno. And they did this, they made a film uh, following them as, I think it was the 19... Is it 1980 or 1981? Mr. Olympia. And uh, Arnold won that. And I'm pretty sure... He, yeah, he came... He won 1975 Mr. Olympia. Arnold won the 1976 Mr. Olympia. Arnold won the 1977 Mr. Olympia. Arnold won the 1978 Mr. Olympia and I think he won the 1979 Mr. Olympia he might have won the 1980 Mr. Olympia but I think he took a break uh, and he came back a couple of years or a few years later and then he won that Olympia maybe the 1984 Unless he won the 1970 Mr. Olympia, 1971 Mr. Olympia, 1972 Mr. Olympia, 1973 Mr. Olympia, 1974 Mr. Olympia. No, I think he won the 1971 Mr. Olympia, 1972 Mr. Olympia, 1973 Mr. Olympia. 1974 Mr. Olympia and 1975 Mr. Olympia and then he came back in 1980 and he won Mr. Olympia in 1980 that's what I think happened because in 1969 and 1970 he, well 1970 the, the year before he won Mr. Olympia he came second to Sergio Olivia who was the Mr. Olympia um, before him. So I think he came second to him perhaps two years in a row. And then Sergio Olivia, I think, retired. And Arnold took over and became Mr. Olympia the following year and stayed there for about five years and then went into movies so the pumping iron would have been possibly the 1980 Mr. Olympia um, because Lou Ferrigno no it probably would have been earlier wouldn't it probably the 1975 Mr. Olympia because Lou Ferrigno then went on to play the Incredible Hulk the television show for quite a few years and that was was that that was the late 70s wasn't it start that started I think because I had this memory of watching the Incredible Hulk when I was about eight it's the sound of Andre running around it's a nice thing is because I make these recordings and I do them and I'm really really lucky to have my home that I'm living in lucky to have this place it's spacious it's you know it's a home for life if I behave myself you know so if I start having massive parties and disturbing all the neighbours and you know I could get kicked out but generally as long as I'm uh, be 
behave myself, I'll, you know, I've got this place for life. And because Andre, I like Andre to have the run of the whole place, apart from the storage room. Uh, and he goes and sometimes when I make a recording, I do put him into the bedroom so that he doesn't disturb the recording. But I just feel a little bad, you know. I just I don't want to. I don't want to put him. I don't want to segregate him. You know. I've seen what's happened in other countries with segregation, and I don't. I don't want to. I don't want that to happen to him. I don't want him to. I want him to feel included. I think inclusion is very important. Which brings you back to the Incredible Hulk. So I'm sure that used to be on the late 70s. I, it's one of my favourite programmes that was. And uh, that's another thing, you know, I was saying earlier, if you're still around, waking, listening, if you can remember. I was talking about the science teacher that said, yeah, we're looking for someone that's enthusiastic. And Bill Bixby, who played the Incredible Hulk's human um, version, he, he played Dr. Banner. I think it was David, was it David Banner? And he said, he used to say to people, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. But again, it was quite a calm the way he said it. It was almost like a a silent fart, you know, it was very kind of very calm and not really threatening at all. But then of course he turned into the Hulk and became green. That was good, I used to like that. He was a really good bodybuilder as well. I didn't really know him as a bodybuilder because I was eight. And in fact, I'd be five or whatever when he was bodybuilding. And I, you know, I was too young to know about stuff like that. I just wasn't on my radar. But he was really phenomenal. He still is really big and muscly. He actually, he entered the Mr. Olympia again, uh, not that long ago, in fact, only a few years back. And so I used to read these magazines, Flex, in the classroom. I really wanted to be a bodybuilder. wanted to be, I just wanted to be big, I wanted to be, I suppose, big and strong, and I could never was able to, I could get the muscles, but only in proportion with the size of my body, in a sense, and it was a bit, yeah, I actually had, I was quite lucky, really, because I had free membership at the local gym, uh, for I don't know how long I got it free for but I got it free for about a year or something because just around the corner I was with my friend Dean and we were it might not have been Dean it might have been Neil or it might have been Ivan Ah, I'm not sure anyway it's one of them we were walking around the corner. We might have been on our bikes. I might have been cycling or I might have been pushing the bike. I can't remember the exact details or even sort of what time of year it was. I don't think it was raining though. The reason I'm saying this is because I probably wouldn't have offered to help if it was raining. But there was this man uh, struggling to get things out of the back of a van, a big van. 
and taking them into this uh, shop. He used to, what, it looked like a shop. And he, he sort of said, what, what are you doing? He said, oh, this is a new gym. Starting a new gym and there was a downstairs and upstairs to the gym. And he was moving carpet in. He said, I said, well, we'll give you a hand. We'll give you a hand to sort of move stuff into it if you give us free membership. And he said, yeah. Uh, so went in there and helped him to move stuff in. And I think... I'm not sure if it was just for a little bit or might have gone in there a couple of days and helped him, but helped move the stuff in, mainly carpets and not the actual gym equipment because that would be too heavy to, yeah, it probably would be, wouldn't it? Not all though, I suppose the benches wouldn't have been, would they? And maybe helped him to carry the some of the lighter things in because there was free weights as well. I don't mean free as in just help yourself and take them home. But they were free, um, like not machines. Because even back then, there was a lot of machines uh, for like weights, you know, like press up machines and uh, machines for legs, for working out your legs, uh, machines for shoulders. So you know, like the bars where you pull down to work your back and your shoulders. And there was the ones where the machines where you could put your hand, your arms on either side and just, I bashed the microphone, sorry. And just pulled the, 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 the pads together to work out the pectoral muscles. And so I didn't help I don't think I helped with the machines because they were too heavy. But I did help with the um, the carpet at least and other some other bits. So yeah, I got a free membership in the local gym, and I used to go down there. I used to go a few times a week, and I always you know the one thing I like I like doing curls. Like with weights, because I think it's it might just be a it might be a thing that everybody sort of gets into when they first go to the gym. The first muscle to really show any kind of improvement seems to be the biceps. They're quite easy to pump up your biceps. So I've got weights here. I could lift them for you know five or ten minutes, and my biceps would look a lot pump more pumped up than they do now. But so it's a bit of a novelty, I suppose, especially for a teenage boy uh, to start like, oh, I've got, I've got a muscle. It probably was like the size of a pea, but to me, it was, it was, you know, like some kind of inverted boil. But you know, for me, it was all. Oh, it really just felt like I was muscly. And yeah, so I used to go there. I think I started paying once I started work. But while I was at school, I got it in for free. So that was quite good. So at that time, um, I didn't need glasses. But then when I was probably 15, and it's, it's quite, I just remember this. I have a real memory of this is I got glasses because I was having um, just problems with vision and stuff so I went went to the opticians it's probably a, there's the same route that probably quite a few people go through isn't it it's, they go to the opticians because they need help with vision you know sight issues I suppose that's that's a route for a lot of people. Yeah, I suppose a lot of people go to the opticians because they need glasses. So that's what I did. I went to the opticians and they gave me glasses. And they said that I needed glasses all the time. I said, what, what even in the shower? And the opticians looked at me 
thinking I was joking. But, you know, I, sometimes I take things literally. And I, because I'd never worn glasses before, it was a novelty, but at the same time, I didn't know what was going to come my way. I didn't realise that everybody was going to, like you know, other friends and people at school, were really going to notice. And they did notice. Those people that I'd never even met before, or that I'd not even know, not even registered that I'd been going to school for five years with, coming up to me and saying, Oi, you're wearing glasses. I was like, oh, okay, thanks. Because sometimes it was good that they told me because I'd you know, forgotten. But it was very weird to suddenly have these things, these frames on my face, circling my eyes. Now I've got eye bags to do that. I've got, you know, but at the time I didn't. At the time it was just my eyebrows. Now I've got eyebrows and eye bags and wrinkles at the sides of my eyes. So my eyes are pretty much, you know, got a nice little circle all the way around. Round, round, round. And I also had, I don't know if it was a lazy eye, but I had an eye issue where I needed to wear a patch. In I needed to wear a patch on the good eye to train the, I suppose it was a lazy eye. It's, it doesn't seem a very nice, a nice term to, you know, to call a part of your body lazy, it doesn't, doesn't seem a bit, you know, oh, your eyes just lazy. That's, that's a bit, seems a bit cruel. Lazy. It just, it's not doing its job, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. But it's not my eyes' fault though, is it? You know, it's not like my eyes sitting there smoking a cigarette, reading a paper, I just on strike so oh, do I can't be bothered to do anything is it time to go home yet it's it's not my eyes fault and the optician said I've got other people to see you know I said alright ok I'll go so I had these glasses and I had this patch and I had to do these exercises so every night I had this patch on and I had to do these exercises where I had to follow my finger or a pencil or something backwards and forwards and up and down and stuff like that and I did it I think I think I did it but uh, as far as I know I haven't got an e a lazy eye now but I might have I, no one's ever mentioned it if I have um, I'm scared to take my glasses off in case no, I haven't got like one eye poking like looking up and the other eye looking forward it's not it's I think it was Maybe it was the focus, uh, or maybe it was slightly off or something. I don't really don't know. But so I wore these glasses all the time for probably about three weeks, four weeks, maybe three weeks. And it was just at the end of school as well. So I just came to the end of work of being at school. And or was it three days? I don't. I didn't wear them for long. Before I decided I was never ever going to wear them again because I didn't like what people were saying. But I did wear them for reading. I think. Yeah, I think I did wear them for reading. But I didn't wear them, or maybe I didn't, I can't remember. But I didn't wear them out ever. I stopped wearing them because I didn't like the response that I was getting. I didn't didn't feel that it was appropriate. But I didn't expect everyone to start worshipping me or, you know, 
someone just appearing out of the blue with a banjo singing me a love song. I didn't tell me how wonderful my glasses were. I didn't expect that, but I didn't didn't wasn't really hoping for the attention that I got. Um, I suppose I was with people that I'd been at school with for since the age of I don't know uh, nine to the age of yeah so that's I left school just before I was 16 I oh, left school in April I was 16 in the August so I probably went eight probably actually before I was nine so 10, 11, 12, 13. So seven years at least. So some of the people that I was at school with, I'd spent seven years with them. Five years in high school, two years in junior school. So they were used to seeing me um, not through a lens, I suppose. I did wonder if it was when I first got them, I, I wondered if, for the other person, was it like talking to me through a window? But I stopped wearing them anyway, and I, perhaps I should have kept kept on wearing them. But even my little brother used to make fun of me, and he was about two two years old. He used to put his his hands into a circle and make fun of me, make out that I was that my glasses looked like hands in a circle which they didn't they just looked like glasses and then when I was in me didn't really bother with glasses I don't think I even wore them for reading to be fair until I was about 19 eight, yeah about 19 I got some glasses for reading and I needed glasses for reading and then since then I've been wearing glasses for reading pretty much for the rest of 18, 28, 38, 40 yeah. so 30 years I've been wearing glasses for reading and probably about five, four, three or I used to when I was with clients I used to wear glasses just my reading glasses because it was something maybe I just it, gave, it was a bit of comfort for me it was a bit of um, I don't know a bit of safety I don't know but it's I, f I quite liked maybe it's that Clark Kent feeling just you know to like a different identity but I used to wear my reading glasses when I was with uh, customers and sometimes I've worn them when I was at work on the computer screens and stuff and then a couple of yeah probably three four five years ago about 2000 and 13 yeah about 2013 I went to the opticians just to get my eyes tested again after the last two or three years and I was told that I needed to wear glasses all the time and I said well are you in the shower and uh, no response from that one I think that it was hilarious the first time but because it was 30 odd years ago that I said it I think they probably passed it on from optician to optician and the optician that I was seeing was probably um, was younger than me so it's, it's probably just it, it's become worn out so although it was original at the time 
it didn't really have the same effect as it had previously but I was okay with that you know I'd, I've moved on it's fine and I've got over it it's okay so I had these glasses but because I worked in an office on a computer screen most of the, ta the day I ended up with um, what do they call them like I had three different lenses in the glasses I don't have them now but at the time three different lenses so the top were for reading no the top were for distance the middle was for the computer screen and the bottom was for reading yeah I think it was something like that and it took a while to get used to it because they weren't um, it was all kind of melded together into one, one lens so you couldn't see that they were um, like that from the outside what was weird though is I felt like I was a lot taller or a lot closer to the ground I forget which one it is now did I feel like I was a lot closer to the ground or a lot further away from the ground so either, either I felt shorter or taller it, was, it kind of distorted how far away the ground was from me it would probably make a bit more sense if I sort of chose which one it was but I forget so I started wearing those glasses and I was fairly pleased with them. They were act, they act a light or whatever. So that you know, in the sun, they used to go sh become shades. And I wore those for a while, and then I had to. I had another eye test two years later, and I needed some new glasses, uh, new lenses. So I ended up getting two different frames one for reading and one for dancing and one for um, not reading you know just general seeing things and and then I think about a year and a half ago or a year or something I went back and I got the the long distance or the general use lenses put into my frames my old frames because they were really nice frames and then recently I don't know how long ago maybe two or three months ago I went back to the opticians and they gave me some new lenses um, again for reading and for general you know day to day stuff so these are the day to day stuff but they have got the actolite so when I'm outside winter or summer the the lenses go grey so it sort of protects my eyes sounded, sounded like I said it protected my ice I don't carry ice around and how would glasses protect a bag of ice but um, and I've got I noticed that I'm not wearing the reading glasses very often which means I'm clearly not reading as much as I perhaps could do so I need to get back into that I've just been focused so much on making videos and working on the website and all that stuff so that that's the story of my glasses really um, so there's nothing else to say I'm going to go so thank you for listening, thank you for watching, thank you for participating in this sleepy, boring session. You can download this video and MP3 on my website, completely free. You can listen to it and stream it and play it on my website as well. Play the video, listen to the audio. 
You can watch the video on YouTube, you can listen to the MP3 on SoundCloud or iTunes or s yeah, it's all over the place. Thank you for following me, thank you for subscribing, for listening. Just thank you for being there. And I'll speak to you next time. Bye. Lots of love.